We are living in unprecedented times and uh, we all have a lot of extra time on our hands. Um, but maybe like you or like me, maybe you are busier now more than ever. So I thought I would come out of YouTube retirement, so to speak, and um, just have a couple of chats over the next week. And I have a few friends that I am super excited to introduce you to, and uh, some of them you may know, some of them you may not know yet, um, but they're all amazing women. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about what it looks like to keep it together in times of crisis. And so over the next week or so, um, I will have a couple of different guests on here to talk about different areas in which they have expertise and um, mostly from the planning or journaling side of things. Um, but really, it's not necessarily about making everything seem perfect or making everything seem like it's normal because the truth is nothing is normal right now, right? Everything a little crazy. Um, and so I just want to talk to you a little bit about how you can maybe release some anxiety, maybe how you can um, get things organized in whatever chaotic environment you are in right now, whatever you find yourself in. Um, and, you know, we're all kind of trying to find that planner P and maybe now is the time that you need something, anything. It doesn't have to be the perfect system. It just has to be something that helps you keep it all together. Um, I'm, I don't know what your life looks like, but I know a lot of my friends right now are trying to figure out how to work from home, how to homeschool children. Um, their whole families are home. Kids from college have returned. Their husbands may be furloughed. You may be furloughed. Whatever your life looks like right now, I can guarantee it is a lot different than it was a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago. And so I just hope that over the next few videos, I can um, help you out in some way. And so today I am super honored to have a special guest. Her name is Lauren Henderson. And Lauren and I met a little while ago um, in completely different circumstances. And when I found out that she was a planner person, I was so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, you're my people. So I am super honored to bring Lauren on with you today and just hear from her and how she is is keeping it together in times of crisis. And so as I welcome Lauren onto the screen, I want to just encourage you that if you are watching live, please feel free to leave a comment. We will try to do some Q&A at the end if we get some time. And if you are watching this as a replay, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this. And you can also leave a comment. I get notified every time there's a comment and I'm happy to jump on here whenever this happens to be ending up on your device. And so hopefully I can be of help to you. So without further ado, I'm going to bring my friend Lauren on and we'll start our conversation. So welcome to Lauren Henderson. Hey, hey Nikki. I'm so excited to be here today. Hey, Lauren. Thank you for joining me. I am living in South California and I know you are too, but we are geographically a couple of hours apart. Um, but just like everybody else, we have this amazing technology to be able to come together. And I feel like we're just sitting in a living room and having a chat. So nice. I feel like we're connecting, even though we can't really meet anyone in person right now. I know. I know. And I see my friend Deanna. She is on here today. Um, so hey, Deanna, it's so nice to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Um, so yeah, Lauren, how have you been? Yeah, it's honestly, it's been crazy. And I'm sure as for so many other people just trying to figure out right now what a new normal looks like. And so I know for so many, it's, it's gotten a little nice to have a little bit of extra time to be at home and kind of just chill out and pinch on some Netflix. And then others of us, it's gotten a little bit busier because we're still working full time and trying to figure out how to manage you know, working full time with having kids at home more and having to homeschool them and do all of those things. So I think for us, that's kind of our situation. We have a kindergartner at home. We have also a, a um, one that's three, two girls. And so that's been an adjustment to try to figure out how to do that whole life. Um, and so through that, we're just trying to figure out how to create a normal for right now, you know. 
Yeah. And you are already busy before this started. You have, you wear many different hats in your life. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah. Okay. So Danny and I, um, my husband moved here to San Diego about a little over two years ago and we started a church here, which has been such an amazing, um, and just an amazing thing for us to, that God's just really been able to use us so many different platforms with that. But We've connected with our community in such a special way, and we have loved every second of it. But it's definitely been such a different vibe than what we're used to. So being here in California where it's very expensive, um, I've had to get a full-time job. So I've been working full-time while we have been here. And so trying to juggle planning a church, working full-time, two small girls has been quite the adventure. But long story short, my in-laws are able to move here. And that was been, that's been such a big blessing that they're able to help with the girls. Um, and so, yeah, wearing multiple different hats at the same time, um, all this was happening. We were having transitions. I had this planner idea and thought, I really want to do this thing. I feel like it can help so many women because it's helped me try to manage life and really focus time on what's important instead of just the tasks that, that come in and take over our lives. And so, just trying to manage all that. So now I find myself as a pastor's wife, a church planter, working full time, a mom, an entrepreneurial, all in the same time and same place and trying to figure out how to do all that. But it's been cool how God's been able to use that and intertwine all of those things and make them work. Um, and even though the seasons can be hard, there's been so many good things that have come out of it. So we're making it work. <laughs> That's amazing. So you designed a planner and it's called the Intentional Living Planner. Is that right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what led you to design a planner that was specifically about intentional living? Sure. So um, at the time Dini and I met, we were both in ministry. We've been married about 12 years now. Um, I grew up in ministry. My dad was a pastor, so grew up around that life. But we were very busy. Very busy. And we had so many things going on that filled up our calendar. And I remember one night, you know, we we decided we were going to wait five years to have kids. We're like, we need to figure out what life's going to look like and get to know each other better and that sort of thing. But we also knew that time was being wasted in so many places. And we weren't really living it the way that we were intentional about and really making the best out of the time that we had. And so we had made this commitment. We're like, we're not going to have kids until we figure this out because we don't want to bring them into a world of where our calendar is filled up and we're spending more time with things that aren't really moving the needle forward in our lives, aren't really filling up our hearts. It's just filling up our calendar. And so we had to kind of figure out what that balance was. And we knew that God was directing us in ministry and um, wanted to make sure we had kind of roots planted as much as possible. But this planner idea came out of once we did have kids and you know my first time mom trying to figure out that whole life what that looks like um trying to manage you know the tasks that now seem like way more because you're doing more laundry than you ever did with just two people um and so trying to figure out how to manage all my tasks but then i began to start losing myself in the process because i would get so full of trying to make sure everyone's happy, trying to make sure I'm doing the mom thing right and making sure my kids were fed and had everything that they needed and making sure my husband had his outlets and was able to still connect with his friends and do his ministry and all of that. And we're such a team in everything that we do. But I found myself stepping back and saying, you do what you need to do to make you happy and you know, take care of yourself and you be healthy. But I wasn't doing that for myself. And I think I really didn't notice it until after um, I had Brooklyn and we had a miscarriage in between our two girls. And I started to have a lot of health conditions, wasn't sure what was going on. It kind of hit this place where I'm like, I've got to figure this out. And found out I had an autoimmune disorder that attacks my thyroid. And so it was just making everything go crazy as a woman. And so I'm like, I've got to figure out a system. My brain is foggy. I've always loved planners and I loved writing things down and marking them off. But that's all a planner ever was to me, was just creating tasks and marking them off and adding three more to it. And I thought I needed to find a way that I'm making sure that outside of just the quiet time that I have with the Lord is making sure I'm setting goals for my life. I'm living more intentionally. And I've 
once I got to know so many other women, they were dealing with the same thing and their focus was just way off. And as I looked further into the distance of women who now their kids have left the home, their, them and their husbands are now trying to figure each other out because for so many years, their focus wasn't where it needed to be. And so I just started to have this burden towards moms and towards, you know, women in general. And so it's kind of where this came out. And this actually was going to be launching right as we were transitioning into planning the church and everything. But I knew that, you know, this is what we need to do. I had done a test market with all these women. And at the time, I was like, I don't know if this is the right time because every all this is happening at the same time. We didn't plan on that. Right. Because we don't plan on <laughs> how life really works out. Um, and so. I had so many friends that were in the test market. They were like, you've got to do this. You, I've gotten so much out of it. You've got to do this. So I did. And it's been incredible. So basically the whole planner is I wanted something that was all encompassing because I felt like I was having a hard time piecing the things that I wanted to together. Um, but I also wanted there to be some type of system that would help women to create rhythms in their life to be able to establish a healthy way of living. And so I thought the only way to do that was to kind of put everything in one place. And so essentially, it's a goal setting and task organizer all in one. Um, what I love about it is it's undated because I think so many women, they are gung ho and they want to get started and they get in there and they, you know, start on the first month and they're like, I've got this. And then month, you know, three, they're like, I missed a whole month, <laughs> you know, in between. And so what I didn't want to do is kind of create that guilty feeling of it. You know, I wanted there to be this feeling of like, okay, you can do this. We're going to encourage you on the, along the way. There's plenty of encouragement in the planner too, to help establish that. But um, I also as an entrepreneur, so I didn't want people to waste their money. <laughs> so I'm like, I want this to last as long as it can. You fill it up with what really matters. So we created these seven areas for goal setting, which kind of encompass every area of your life. So it's your your um, financial state of where you're at right now, just your ambitions, because a lot of times we forget about our ambitions, our family goals, our relational goals, health goals, just a lot of those different things, just your spiritual goals, just kind of taking a whole look at your whole self and saying, where am I giving my best time? And so it kind of helps you establish that. And then through that, you establish action steps, but those action steps are what you build into your routine so you actually make them happen. Um, and because I think it's so easy because that's where we get stuck is we're like, oh, we want to do this thing. But the first step is always the hardest. And but the first step, it's not only the hardest, but we don't usually have something to hold us accountable to make those steps. So this is building it into a rhythm and a routine that says, OK, I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. and I'm going to have my quiet time at this time or whatever is thing you're trying to establish or working out, you know. If you have small kids and they're up early in the morning, that's probably not the best time. But do you need to do it at night after they go to bed? Whatever works out. But just trying to figure out a rhythm. Um, but what I love about it most is in there are reflections where it's taking the time daily to say, how well did I do today? Or can I improve for the next day? What can I do better for the next day? Because it's consistently helping you grow and helping you see where your struggles are. Um, and so it's just, it's been great. So we've been so excited to be able to kind of have an all in one thing to help women. And it's been fun to watch how many women it's really helped. I love that. I am so, I just think that the, everything that you just said is so needed. It really is. And I remember being a young mom and thinking, oh my gosh, I have all these things that I want to do, but I don't know where to start, you know? Mm -hmm. And even when you talked about feeling like, um, you, you, like you almost feel like you're not allowed to have ambition because you have all these other people who are first in line ahead of you, you know? And, um, that's a, a lot of the reason why my YouTube channel has taken a back seat over the last couple of years is because I've been pursuing mm -hmm. my ambitions and um, not that planning and YouTube wasn't a part of that. It was just like I couldn't juggle everything all at once, you know, um, and so thank you for creating this planner. I think that this is me. Um, I would, I'm curious though, now that we're in California and places around the world and around the country, we are in this time where we're in a stay at home 
order, right? And so now you find yourself at home with your kids yeah. and your husband and you know, you're a, you're a church planter, you're an entrepreneur, you also work full time. What does your day look like right now that yeah. you're at home? How are you able to fit all of this stuff in? For sure. So most of it for me during the day feels kind of normal because I'm still I'm still considered essential where I work for t- full time. So I'm still getting up, going to work, doing my thing. It changes when I get at home because the rhythm is very different. The feel of the house is different because things have, you know, been a little bit more chaotic than usual because my girls who are six and three are not used to being around each other (laughs) for that long of a period of time anymore. Um, And so they're trying to have to relearn how to play with each other and get along and all of those things. And so I knew the biggest thing for me with not being home is trying to find a way to create consistency for them um, while they are home. And so I mentioned my in-laws had moved here, um, which has been incredible. So they actually have been able to help out with them during the day. And my mother-in-law who became an instant homeschool Mimi, who didn't think she was going to have to do that. I'm a new homeschool mama. She's a homeschool Mimi. We're trying to figure out this balance together. Um, And as a mom, I felt this huge responsibility and this guilt of, I want to be there. I want to help her, but I can't. My time is elsewhere and trying to figure out that tug and pull, but this gratefulness of still having my job to go to, but then this fear of like, I don't want to bring this stuff home either, you know? So trying to balance that has been something that we're trying to get adjusted to. But um, one of the biggest things was, I feel like I told Nikki this earlier. I was like, I feel like most of my resources have come out of a time of chaos and out of a time of just necessity of needing something to help us solve a problem. And so I created this, um, got it right here actually, it's called School Days, and created this digital resource. It's actually on our shop. Um, it's like $10, you can download it how many ever times you want to for forever. But I knew that we need to create some rhythms in our home. And so this has kind of really helped us do that. So we have a verse of the week that our kids learn. We also do a devotion at the end of every night. But I also want to try to figure out a schedule that they could have during the day. Because what I have learned is our kids do thrive on some normalcy, some schedule. And so we're trying to create normal as much as possible. um, Because trying to help them understand what's going on in our world can be very fearful and very scary for young kids. Um, and even for some of the older ones, you know, I'm thinking about the seniors in high school who are looking to graduate and may not be able to, you know, so it's, it's a lot of emotions. It's yeah. Like we can't get out of the house, you know, and a lot of like pulling each other's hair because you're bored and you're fighting more <laughs> and all of those things. So our biggest thing is trying to establish some rhythms um, that help our kids and also just get them a little bit more active in ways that we can and just get really creative. So um, we've also done more baking. So <laughs> I've been laughing. I'm like, we're going to gain that 15, like quarantine 15, you know, because we've been baking more than usual. Um, but I think more than anything, it's trying to create this time to be something that is going to be memorable and also think about it in a way as this is an opportunity for us instead of this thing happened to us. Cause I think it's so easy to say like all of this happened to us and it's chaotic and I feel out of control. And I don't know what to do. And instead kind of changing our mindset, changing our perspective and saying, we've never had this much time together as a family. Our nights aren't as busy as they used to be. We're forced to be able to spend intentional time together. And so that's what we try to do. We mix it up. We do fun little table topics around the table at dinner and get us talking about different things and um, get us moving in different ways and, and all of that. So it's been it's been fun to try to figure out those little nuances of trying to create a new normal. I love it. I love that um, you're trying to find those opportunities instead of um, focusing on how well, this happened and there's nothing we can do about it. And I think that's so key to li- continuing to live intentionally during this time, right? Um, because I think it's so easy for us to just be like, well, I give up. I mean, I can't fix it. And so I'm just going to go crawl back in bed with my ice cream and pretend that none of this is happening, right? But we have been still given our our families and we've been given this time. And so 
I, I love that you're offering different ideas, even on your social media on how to continue to live intentionally. So um, tell us a little bit about your quarantine challenge, because this just I love it. I think this is such a fun idea. It's been so much fun. So when President Trump had kind of announced on, you know, we're giving us going to be given till the end of April, the 30th, um, until we're kind of all under this stay at home orders and it could be longer. We're not sure. I just started thinking about all the families that are at home that they're not able to have an outlet like I do currently to go to work. Um, and that gets a little normal for me. But I knew that people were just getting stir crazy. And it's, it's so easy for the first few days to enjoy it. And just like I was mentioning, just binging on Netflix and enjoying that extra time. Um, but then I thought, I really want people to take advantage of this opportunity and create some new fun things within your family, create, create new ways to connect. Um, and some that even don't have families, it can be, get very lonely when you're at home by yourself all the time. And so I just thought it would be fun to say, let's do this fun quarantine challenge. Let's create, you know, many different ways to to just be a little bit more active. Let's do something we haven't done in a while. So what we I basically did was, as we're going to take six different challenges, basically, and we'll have five ideas for each one each month. But what they are is like the first one's get moving. So that was day one was get moving. Find a way to get moving because I think people who are used to going to the gym and having memberships are those that don't enjoy working out and never wanted to. Um, it's easier just to stay on the couch. And I thought that just sitting on the couch for hours and hours and hours, you start to feel like useless. You know, you, you start to feel like, what what am I doing? Do I even have purpose with, with what I'm doing my day now? And so I think just getting up and getting moving just really helps your mindset and kind of opens up, you know, your, your endorphins a little bit more to get a little bit more excited about what you have for the day. And so we'll have a lot of fun ideas for getting moving during the during your month. One of the things that I struggle with on the couch potato totally, okay. um, but I've just been in Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting yeah. after Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. every day. And it's like, I am chained to a computer, you know? And so it, a friend of mine doing squat challenges oh. and um, yeah, which is amazing, yeah. except I've just been watching them do their squatches. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to join that you can't squat and zoom Not today, <laughs> maybe tomorrow. <laughs> it's so easy to do that, you know? And it's so, easy. yeah, I feel like, working out for so many of us or moving has been this thing's like i'll get to that another day i'm too tired today because it's so easy to say that you know what we really want to do is just chill out you know on the couch and so it's been fun to find people they're finding new ways of like oh i've you know started doing pio and i really like that i never thought i would before i started yoga or i have actually seen my neighborhood a little bit more, you know, taking a fresh walk outside. Um, so I think that when we get just closed in our home, we forget about the beauty that's really around us, especially when we can't get out much, you know. So I think that getting moving is just also a way of saying we have bodies to be able to do this and to get active. Let's use them and let's get excited about it. So um, so that's a big one. And then getting connected is one of the other um, challenges we're going to have in multiple different platforms because it's easy to feel very disconnected right now to people. And so we're going to have a multiple ways of connecting with people when you can't actually be with them. So I'm excited about that one. Um, getting creative. Um, the one we posted today actually was kind of trying to find a hobby that you haven't done in a while. Or if there's a new one you want to start that you feel like you haven't had time for, um, find new ways to get creative or find new things to cook or new recipes or baking or whatever it is that you feel like you just have been cooking the same thing for multiple months in a row because you're just like, I'm tired and I don't want to think about it. Um, or start your YouTube channel. Yeah, <laughs> I was so excited that that was your challenge today. I was like, I'm doing it. That's me. <laughs> Praise hands. You got it. You're doing it. It's amazing. And I, another one is get organized. So for me, and this doesn't go for everyone, but I feel like when your home is clean and kind of put together, that brings so much peace. Um, I feel like in when everything feels chaotic and your home feels chaotic, 
we've always said our home wants to be a place of peace, not only just when people are come over to, you know, dinner, you know, and we just shove everything in the closet. It's we really want to create that peace at home because we feel like that's where we are. And Danny and I would always laugh. He's like, he knew if I was stressed out, he's like, just go clean out a closet and you'll be fine. You know, so there's this big joke between us because I love an organized home. I'm like an organized junkie. Um, and so I think that just finding creative ways of just organizing your home, keeping things, you know, nice and clean, whether it's just making your bed every morning when you get up. That may be a new thing that you haven't established yet. But I know when I walk in my bedroom and my bed's not made, it feels like it's everything's a mess. And then if you just make it and I walk in, I'm like, oh, I can breathe a little lighter. So just different ways to do that. Um, and then another one is just get thinking. I think it's easy right now to think so much about what's going on in the world and be surrounded by the news and, and all of that. And we're scrolling on social media all the time that we're not allowing ourselves to grow during the season. And I think it's important to, if you like to listen to podcasts or if you like to do something like we're doing today and listen to a YouTube channel that you love and learn a little bit more or pick up a new book or establish new um, rhythms of, you know, Bible studies or Zoom calls with people, whatever it is, um, finding a way to get your mind thinking. Is it, if it's journaling, getting all these things out that's going on in our world right now, what's going on in the chaos of your life and just getting it on paper, whatever that looks like, just getting thinking, keeping things moving, that sort of thing. And then the last one that we're going to focus on the ch challenge is get grateful. Because I feel like it's really hard to find things to be grateful for during this season when we can be so bombarded by the chaos of what's happening. But I feel like there are so many things we do have to be grateful for. We just don't give them the time that they deserve and the attention that they deserve. So I'm excited about this. We're on day three. We have till the 30th. And it's been fun to see how people are interacting with it, how they're like, this is good ways of thinking about things. I've enjoyed this extra time, but now I'm getting bored and I need to get my mind on something else and, and just really take the opportunity that we have to continue to grow as a person. I love it. And so we can participate in this challenge on Instagram. Yeah, Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook. So you can find Lauren at LH Creative Design Co on Facebook and Instagram. And um, we actually, um, Deanna has asked if you have your planner, could we see it? Yeah, so this is it right here. It's a planner. Um, I'll go through a couple little pages. It kind of tells you exactly how to work the planner there. Um, and each area has just each tab for each month just has something to kind of encourage you and say, okay, girl, you got this. You can do it. Keep going. Um, but what I love is the first area kind of, is it a section about me that kind of gives you some pointed questions to learn a little bit more about yourself, dig a little bit deeper before you kind of dive into just planning mode. Um, because I feel like it's really important during this process to learn more about who you are as a little pocket too, because every planner needs a pocket, right? Um, I'll just step through just real quick a couple things. These are the monthly goals that we kind of talked about in those seven key areas that you can set. And then you have your non-dated calendar there. And then it kind of goes from there to creating your weekly. I don't know if you can see it really well. Um, but it kind of helps you create your action steps, your brain dumps for what's going on that week. You can also do meal planning if you're into that sort of thing, which is really awesome. Create your shopping list and your meal planning. Um, and then it goes into daily pages here where you're kind of creating your action steps into your routine, managing all your tasks that you have today, and then you do your reflections also at the end of every day. That goes on for every day of the week. And then there's also sections for notes and whatnot in there as well at the end of every week. So um, really great, kind of brings everything all in place. And you can find that on our shop. They are $40. So I love it. It's so beautiful. It's hardcover, mm -hmm. right? It's Coil brown, coil bound, and looked like it had tabs and everything. So, yeah, tabs, everything. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So, and it's undated. Is that right? Undated, which is great because you can buy it and know that you'll be able to work through the whole thing um, without feeling like you have to throw it away if you're not very good at keeping up with the rhythm. And that's okay if you're not, because you know. Yeah. How to that. So yeah. we can create a way that is is doable and. Right. Uh, also customizable enough for you as a person 
um, I don't do well with planners that tell me how much water to drink because I feel like, what if I'm good at that? <laughs> you know, um, this is a way for you to establish the things that you need to grow in and work in and write those things in and hold yourself accountable. Yeah. I love it. I also love that my dogs are barking in the background. This is real life, you guys. Okay. <laughs> um, so you can find Lauren's planner on um, on Etsy. And I will make sure if they're not our description, I'll go in and edit it and make sure this is all clickable. Um, and then she has a few other things. You showed us that school days printable. Is, yeah. And I believe that's accessible through your link tree, right? So you can find that on there too. Um, Lauren, thank you so much for spending time with me today. And uh, do you have anything else that you want to just add or share before we go? One other thing um, I want to mention is we launched this year, the intentional living bundle. It's also, you can click right at on that link tree or go to the shop. This is something my husband and I've been actually doing together during this extra time that we have. Um, we had date night every Friday night. That looks a little bit different now. So it's like date night in the car, you know, grab your favorite gluten-free dessert because we eat gluten-free. Um, but we've been able to spend some extra time just talking through things. And so this bundle just is a way for you to connect with your spouse and write down those financial goals that you have together, your parenting goals, your marriage goals, um, family values, family goals. It's just a really unique way during the special time to sit down, talk about those things, because it's so easy to have normal conversations when you're in a normal environment where you're like, well, what did you do today at work? How was it? You know, and this helps to create more conversation um, and helps you dream a little bit more together. And that's one thing that we've we started from the time of our marriage was this night that we said, this is our dream night date night. And it's a time for us just to set aside. And sometimes we have you know, playing crazy dreams that we thought this is never going to happen. But it's just to get you thinking outside of the box and get you connecting on a different level instead of just talking about the same things all the time. And I think that that's what this time really has given us is to do that with our kids, do that with our spouses, is to get out of our normal rhythms of busy life and us not really taking the time to have the conversations, to connect on the ways that we need to. And so I really, my prayer, my hope is that these resources are a benefit for you to do that. It's been great for our family. And that's all Nikki and I are really here to do is just help you through a chaotic season to really figure out how to connect deeper with the people that you are surrounded by um, on, an, on another level and to grow as a person too. So um, that's my biggest hope for you during this this time and that your family is safe. Um, Cause I know it can be a very trying and very kind of scary season, but we pray that just protection over each of your families as well. That's awesome. Thank you. I'm excited about that. My husband is still working um, just like normal. He is in the medical field and so he goes to work every day. So um, it's nice that you're offering that resource in your shop as well. I think I'm going to go check that out. So <laughs> thank you, Lauren. So yeah, thank you so much for joining us. And um, I'm just going to put that out there, you guys. This is a time where I know that um, everything is uncertain right now. But if you can support a small business, um, Lauren is a personal friend of mine. And I think that she would be an excellent small business to um, send your way. So thank you again for joining us, Lauren. And thank you for all of your tips today. So Friends, I am so grateful that you joined us today, and I hope that you will join us again um, on Monday. I am going to get to speak with some of your favorites. I know she's one of my favorites. Enthusiastically, Dawn, we are going to talk about journaling in this time of crisis, how we can use that to keep it together. So I hope that you will join me again. And um, yeah, leave some comments down below and I will answer them after the live stream is over. And again, just like Lauren, I am praying for you. I am here to help you if you need anything. You can instant message me. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Facebook and you can find me at allbecauseofhim.com. I am so honored that you joined me today. Thank you so much and be blessed. Have a great weekend.